Russia's perfect borders. I mean, Russia's borders are already a pretty controversial topic. What would a perfect Russian border look like? Well, I mean, that's the title of the video. That's why you're here. Before we get into the meat of the video, I want to get a disclaimer out of the way. This video is for education purposes only, okay? This is not an entertainment video, it's not a shit post. This is pure science, and I expect this video to be played in many colleges and be the groundwork for many theses. Okay, so Russia. We, we all know how Russia looks, the biggest country in the world. What's way bigger though, we all know where this is going. Russia needs some more chunk. I think Russia has been on diet lately, especially with current events. I don't, I don't think Russia has much energy left, so they need some more meat on their body. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Belarus. It's in the name. Bella basically means white in, in Russia. So Rus, you, you, you can guess what that means. So it means white Russia as opposed to black. So the people in Belarus, they're the white Russians as opposed to the black Russians. So yeah, that goes into Russia. Many different ways this could happen. It, it almost happened a couple of years ago. So Belarus, obvious. Now, you see this little thing next to Poland and Lithuania? That was German. Now it's Russian. Why is it Russian? Because nobody fucking wants it. Why does nobody want it? Because it's full of Russians. And nobody likes Russians, especially Polish or Lithuanian people. I think it's best for that little little nugget to be connected to Russia. So we'll have to take we'll have to take Lithuania. There is no way. So how can how can Russia take Lithuania? It can happen a couple of different ways. Russia has a pretty big army and Lithuania is pretty small. I, I think if Russia could somehow managed to annex all of Lithuania in a couple of days. I don't think NATO would notice and they would just pretend it didn't happen. Uh, there's another one. Now, Russia has a pr pretty solid, solid coastline. I mean, much more solid than in, than what Russia has today. They would have much greater control over the Baltic Sea, which is very great, very great for Russian strategic desires. Some astute viewers might have noticed that Latvia and Estonia are isolated. And you might be thinking, oh, it's easy picking Russia. No. No, you get Latvia, Estonia, NATO war, GG. Now, you don't touch Latvia or Estonia. If you annex Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia are at your mercy. You can intercept their supply from sea. They don't have a land connection to NATO. So, what are they to do? Well, they're gonna build up their army more, but that's what you want, because they're not gonna attack. So, they build up their army, and they grow in their economy, and they, they just become Russian satellite states, because their economy is in ruin. Uh, let's go south, let's go south. There's Ukraine in the south. One of most friendly countries to Russia. Uh, really, the relationship between Ukraine and Russia is something everyone should strive to achieve with their friends. It's really, really interesting how those two countries are just the best of friends. Outside of Ukraine, don't focus on Ukraine. Always big, but like, focus on this little strip, little fried potato-looking country. <laughs> that's that's called Misnistria, and it's basically the emo child. Of Moldova. And interesting thing about Transnistria is there are at least top three Russia's same countries. Uh, if you're not familiar with that list, I mean, I don't know what to say to you, get educated. So it, at least top three or four Russia's same countries. So Russia could easily convince them. They don't even have to convince them. Uh, they, they would just join the union. You ask them, they would join. Okay. With Transnistria in the union, uh, well, you, you don't have access to them. We, Ukraine is Russia's best friend, but you know, you can't just, like, bother your best friend all the time. It's kind of annoying. I think uh, Putin sh should just, uh, at this point, ask Ukraine for Odessa. I mean, I, I think they're, they're going to give it to them. Like, U Ukraine has no ships anyway. Why do they need why do they need a port city? So uh, Russia gets Odessa and Bessarabia pretty easily, I think. Now the border is looking kind of janky. You know, Moldova is protruding into Russia. So now getting Moldova is pretty easy, actually. So I think I'm... We might as well get Moldova too. Because Moldova, what Moldova wants the most is to reunite with Transnistria. Well, I mean, yeah, they're going to be in one country. They're going to be one country, Russia. I mean, so, yeah, pretty, pretty easy union there. I mean, uh, with Odessa in Russian hands, again, uh, the Black Sea is looking pretty, pretty Russian. But it could look more Russian. So, I think a, a good next target is Crimea. Uh, now, then again, R Ukraine and Russia, best friends, the best countries to be friends. After Ukraine has already given Odessa, they wouldn't just give Russia more land. So Russia has to do something in return. So for Ukraine giving Russia Crimea, 
they'll have to take over the mess that is Donbass and Luhansk. I mean, those pesky Donbass and Luhansk rebels. Uh, Russia will just take care of them for Ukraine. And yeah, that's that's how Russia could get Crimea, just take care of the Donbass and Luhansk rebels. Uh, you know, Ukraine doesn't want to deal with those. So let's move to the one of the best countries in the Caucasus. And of course, I'm talking about Abkhazia and South Ossetia. A uh, really a nice place you can be in. If you can move there, I would highly recommend it. Uh, so yeah, uh, those countries, because every every other country is so jealous of them, they're not widely recognized. They would, they would be willing to join Russia just for that international recognition. And a similar situation with Moldova and Georgia here. Georgia wants to take those great prosperous regions, uh, occupy them, subjugate them. So that's why they would join Russia just so they can be united, in a sense, with them. Uh, well, we've moved south. We've moved really south, so I guess we should move east. It's always worked out great, great for Russia moving east. If you can't move west, south, or north, just move east. What, what other direction is there to go? Literally, what other direction is there to go? What's east? Well, east is those big-looking countries. I think it's called Stans. Stans, so yeah. Let's take those. I mean, uh, should be should be easy, right? Uh, I I don't see how that could pose a problem. I mean, now we have a border with Iran, and if there is anything to know about Iran, they're very easy to invade. I mean, Russia has a great track record of invading mountainous desert countries, so that this should be a breeze. And something else about Russia. Their navy is, is not that big. It is very quality. It is very strong, but it's not that big. And what's the place where your ships have the most value? Oh, usually those places are straits. Because you put one ship in a strait, even a thousand ships couldn't go through that strait. And what's the best strait in the world? Oh, of course, it's the Strait of Hormuz. All the good Middle Eastern oil passes through there, so it can get to the great People's Republic of China. So, I mean, Russia has to take that part. It, it will be a great boost to their economy and global standing. And uh, as I said, inv invading Iran, a breeze. I don't know how Iran hasn't already been invaded by Iraq or something. So, yeah. Well, pff, I mean, there is not much more south you can go. I mean, what do we go into the Arab Arabian Peninsula? Now, that's, that's not land naturally suited for Russians. So... Once again, we have to we have to go east. If you can't go anywhere else, you have to go east. And what's more east? Well, I mean, China is east. But once again, one of the bestest friends of Russia. I don't see no way they could ever stab them in the back or anything like that. In they they also don't have any overlapping territorial claims at all. So uh, yeah, oh, we don't touch China. It's just nice like that. Oh, what's what's that thing above China? That desert looking. Oh yeah, Mongolia. Yeah. With Mongolia, I mean, I don't think you can take Mongolia without any any pushback from the international community. But here's the thing about Mongolia. All of Mongolia lives in, in one city, Ulaanbaatar. Okay, so just take everything else. They they will just not notice, like like Lithuania. Like they all they all live in one place. Just, just take everything else except Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia, and and this, you're good to go. But now we have the similar situation to Moldova again. Just this protruding bulge into China. Yeah, we have to fix that. Uh, and just Russia just gets Manchuria, just the northern part of Manchuria. Uh, you might say this is so unrealistic. Russia could never get Manchuria, or this is. There is this easy trick, actually. Just give all the nukes to China. Why do you need them? Are you going to use them? Russia has had nukes for like 100 years now. Did they use them? I mean, no. So, like, just give them to China. They, they might make good use of them, unlike you, Russia. I mean, south of that is North Korea. We don't want to touch that country. It's, yeah, you don't want to touch that. And east of that, a little bit east of North Korea is Japan aka Weeb Nation, so we don't touch that. Russia keeps keeps, keeps its based society. Oh, so we can't go south. I mean, north of that is just the North Pole. And Russia has enough snow nice already. 
we already went west, so we got we gotta go east. We gotta just go east. Oh wait, uh, well, just go more east. Go more east. Okay. Oh, nice, it's nice, nice place. I think this is called the the furthest east. This is the furthest east you can go. And we've arrived with the other contenders for the top Russia simp country. Of course, of course, we know top one is Serbia. I, I, but I think Bulgaria can can make a strong top two contender, and that's the next country we're gonna annex. Uh, you might say, whoa, 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 but Bulgaria is in NATO. That doesn't matter. Why is Bulgaria in NATO? It's like when you have a crush on someone, but you don't talk to them. Why don't you talk to them so they so you can get their attention? This is what Bulgaria is doing. So, and I might think, okay, annex Serbia, the top one Russia simp. No. Why don't you annex Serbia? Or if you annex Serbia, you lose your biggest ally, your biggest sim. You don't want to do that. So, uh, and this is what Russia is doing right now. They could easily annex Serbia. Okay, uh, but now this Bulgarian enclave. Oh, why don't we just connect it to the other enclave of Moldavo, Ukraine, Bessarabia thing? Uh, so yeah, we just so yeah, we just take northern Dobruja from Romania. And you might say, well, Romania is not going to allow you to do that. No, no. So see, like, the Bruja is connecting them to the Black Sea. And you might think this is an advantage, but it's not. Nobody wants to be near the Black Sea. And a bonus of that, it makes Romania this perfect circular country. Who wouldn't want to live in a perfect circular country? I know I would. And, like, as we said, Black Sea, not, not a great place to be next to. Uh, Russia has to secure a way out of there, and I think a very easy way out of there is just take Trace in Istanbul, you secure the Straits, the Dardanelles, and yeah, a very, very easy way to the Mediterranean, where the good beaches are, and yeah, I think this is pretty much it, this is, this is peak Russia right here. Uh, Vladi Daddy, you're welcome. You can use this in your national strategy, I, I think you might be needing it right now, hope to see you guys soon.